This is the Start Drive Torque, a bike labeled as the most affordable torque e-bike. And aside from the torque mid-drive, the instant eye-catcher is also those big 26.4 wheels on a folding bike. There's lots to the Start Drive Torque, but the unit I was sent is a version 1 prototype. They're currently on version 2, with a version 3 set to be the shipping bike. That version 3 is supposed to be loaded with features. Fingerprint recognition, amazing range, wireless phone charging integrated, however that's going to work. I mean, lots of stuff. Just look at all the lines pointing to things. The one I was sent, though, the version 1 prototype, far less feature set, and also has a couple of questionables. Here's another spec sheet, and you can see they have a few variants. I have the 750 watt version, but minus the air with a lesser battery, which in turn is lesser range. The pricing looks enticing for what is stated as far as features go. A little bit of backstory on the bike. I was told that the previous reviewer had kind of done a number on this bike and lots of things needed to be repaired or replaced, so I knew it was going to be a little beat up, especially when I saw the packaging. More on that in a minute, but let me get right to the ride experience. Now, I've ridden torque drive bikes before, but this is my first Bafang torque drive and my first time with a 750 watt torque drive. It spins up nicely. Even on the normally slow and steady inclines, I can easily hold 20 miles per hour when in the highest pedal assist setting on sport mode. And being a mid-drive, there's a nice balance. It gives it a lower center of gravity that gives it a somewhat sporty feel, even with the big wheels. And those wheels make an impressive roar when you're riding around over 20 miles per hour. And the beauty of a torque drive is that unlike a cadence sensor bike, even though some cadence sensor e-bikes are starting to get pretty good, they're still a mostly on or off type thing. That means speed is usually set more by power setting than pedal and gearing. A torque drive is totally different, since it responds to the amount of effort put into the pedaling rotation. I mean, it still does turn on and off, but in between that on and off, it's going to scale with how hard the rider is trying to pedal. Basically, making the rider feel like they have bionic legs very quiet too. It's hard to hear it engage and disengage, especially over the tire noise. No air fork on this demo bike, but it does have a front suspension, which paired with the big tires and that springy saddle makes most riding obstacles basically disappear. And transitions to gravel, even at top speed, an afterthought. As is riding on the shoulder of the road, which is typically a less than smooth experience, it's not a problem with this bike. Since this bike had been abused previously, it didn't want to add to its troubles, and I'll get to those in a second, but I still took a few liberties. Using the fat tire squish and the front suspension to make short work of a few curbs and some rough patches. Another torque drive benefit is that it scales well with the gearing, even in the lowest gear it augments, not overpowers. Meaning it's not so easy to run out of pedal, like sometimes happens on even the best cadence sensor e-bikes. And since the drive unit's contained at the bottom bracket, there's no additional weight on the rear wheel. All good so far, but the spike's not perfect. Being a prototype and being abused has an issue. There's a frequent pop when it starts off, especially when using throttle-only mode, which by the way, this bike has. But it also happens when pedaling, but I did find the source of the problem, and you'll see that later. Another issue that I have with this demo bike is the battery. Remember that 18 amp hour battery? This one came with an 8.8, and that's not much, and that keeps the range, especially on the highest assist mode, under 10 miles, averaging about 8. No doubt the 18.8 will increase things significantly, especially in the lower pedal assist modes, but for this bike and for this review, it means short rides for testing. And still, even beat up and with the V1 limits, I get the vision for what the start drive torque is wanting to be, and it sounds appealing. This is definitely not the advertised bike, but we can give it a closer look and get more of an idea. First and foremost, coolest head tube branding yet, and I like the orange paint. They said it was triple coated. The bars are standard 31.8 with a threadless headset, and the grips are old-ish looking foam lock-ons that someone put on at a bizarre angle. And yes, that throttle is upside down. I was told this was done on purpose for some reason. The production versions will be the other way around. It's equipped with a Shimano trigger shifter and eight speed, Start Drive is based in Sweden, and that may explain the international braking setup with the left brake working the rear and not the front. All the electronic controls for the E-Drive, they're on the left side of the bars, and they're paired to a Bafang color LED display. Computer function is simple and intuitive. There are plus and minus buttons, a headlight button that also dims the display when it turns the headlight on, and long pressing the plus button switches between eco and sport modes. You can probably guess, more power and torque and less range for the sport mode. The I or info button works through display options. Trip, odometer, max speed, average speed, range, it lies by the way, calories, time, and trip meters. 
There's a fender for the front wheel. It's great for deflecting things those big tires throw around. Tires that are Chow Yang 26 by 4.0, standard fat bike rims, super wide, and painted orange. The front wheel features a quick release, and the skewer was badly bent when it arrived and had to be replaced. Not only did it arrive kind of beat up, but it apparently sat some too. There were spider webs in the spokes. As I've already mentioned, no air fork. This is a standard coil with a preload and a lockout. It does make a difference though. The headlight is controlled by the handlebar switch and it's a dual LED and at one point it quit working and looking at the mystery wire cuts I feared the worst but a jiggle of the connectors it came back to life. You know I once despised folding bikes but now not so much and this one works like the rest it's easy to open and close and I would show it folded but the damage I've been talking about it includes someone snapping the folding rest down below the motor. The pedals are folders too, but they're too stiff to worry with, and the crank set, that's part of the mid-drive, the heart of the beast, the Bafang 750 watt, and that torque drive, it has open source software from what I understand, and I hear people are modding these up to 2500 watts. I was able to discover the source of all that popping. I was told that a previous reviewer snapped the chain, and whoever replaced it, well, it's loosey-goosey. Aside from the pops, I'll say the Bafang, it's nicely smooth. Now, it's not Bosch smooth, but it's nice. And I would have put many more miles on this mid-drive had the battery been the final version, that 1800 amp hour. A keyed lock secures the battery, which is a stark drive laser etched power pack. You may have noticed when I opened the frame that there was a loose screw. Someone apparently took the battery apart too, and it looks like they stripped out one of the housing screws. Just sad. Battery charging can be done out of the bike or through the charge port on the rear frame half. Mid-drive up front and tourney in the back, and it gets noisy like a tourney does on bumps, but it shifts through the 8-speed cassette just fine. The rear wheel gets a fender too that matches the front and those brakes. Mechanical and the specs say professional quality, whatever that means. They're Pro X1 and they feel like standard mechanical discs to me. Bike also came with a rear rack, but I didn't mount it, partially because I don't like the way it looks, and also because it's the mount point for the included tail light, which has quick connectors that would go to wires that someone snipped off. The saddle almost looks comical and out of place on this bike with its cruiser springs and rivets, but it does a good job to help smooth out the ride. So to me, this is kind of an interesting bike. At the very least, it's my first Bafang experience. And I was told that there's a patent pending, something to do with this frame, with these wheels, and this drive system. Whatever, but it is unique and it gets attention from people in Mustangs for some reason. Alright, now that all that's said, let me mention a couple of extra things. You know, I review bikes here, and hopefully entertain and maybe even give some information that may be helpful. But let me talk about Start Drive, because I hadn't heard of them before. They do have another bike that apparently has been available for a while. I'll link to their website below where you can read more. There's also a blog that's full of information even on this bike. But here's a note. This bike is on Indiegogo, and now that's not good or bad in itself. There's nothing wrong with Indiegogo. I've bought stuff through Indiegogo before. But e-bikes on Indiegogo, there's a varying history there. I'll let you look it up and make your own decisions. Oscar, the owner of Stark Drive and where it gets its name, he seems like a nice guy and he seems committed to the bikes that he makes. But I take it as a sort of geek blasphemy that someone with a cool name like Stark would wear a Superman shirt. Just wasted opportunities. I do like that chrome frame. So there it is. I've shared everything that I know and my experiences with the prototype bike for the Stark Drive Torque 750 watt. So what do you think, both about this bike and the Bafang Torque Drive, or maybe you a cadence sensor kind of person? Comment below and let me know. Be sure to subscribe. You have the notification bell active, and I have a Patreon if you want even more content. I'll put the links below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.